Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Let's Taste with the Intrepid Wino. My name is James Scarcebrook. Her name is Millie. Uh, she's going to be helping me taste a wine from the Intrepid Cellar on this edition. Uh, it is actually a Riesling wine. Um, for those of you who are possibly uh, somewhat inexperienced as far as Riesling, uh, it is arguably um, the best, if not one of, the best uh, aging, ageable, ageable? aging white wines you can have uh, certainly uh, some of the oldest wines in the world that are still you know look pretty good are uh, uh, german rieslings uh, and um, australian riesling uh, has a very very strong reputation the reason that i'm looking at today uh, has been in my cellar for oh, the better part of maybe eight eight years i think um, and it has been sitting under a screw cap for all that time and probably before that as well. <laughs> it's not really from a, a region particularly well known for Riesling like uh, Clare Valley or Eden Valley uh, or even um, parts of Victoria and Western Australia. It's actually from the Canberra district and it is from arguably the Canberra district's most famous winery, Clonakilla, uh, winemaker Tim Kirk. Uh, it's certainly one of, if not the first, commercial uh, vineyard and producer in that area. Um, very famous for their Shiraz, uh, Shiraz Viognier. Um, and um, I had bought, bought a bottle of, a couple of bottles of these, uh, I think on Langton's, uh, when I was uh, in that kind of phase of trying to find some uh, iconic Australian wines, uh, certainly ones with a bit of age or ones that I could put down for a while. Uh, this is my last bottle. I thought it would be an opportunity um, to look at an older example of Riesling. I have tasted some older Rieslings here on Let's Taste. Uh, head back, I think I opened up a Drumble Riesling uh, from Sepulton. And so um, let's have a look at the Clone Killer. If Millie can let me. Millie, we go. Okay, so it's picked up a bit of colour now. Um, it is still in that kind of yellowy, slightly green, but um, the consistency is, is a bit thicker. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit darker. Probably more in that straw yellow. Young Riesling tends to be quite pale in colour. Definitely um, looking, uh, you know, like it's got some age. It is more in that kind of uh, glazed. Candy sort of lime and lemon, um, and it is picking up that lovely kind of oily character, but moving into some sort of um, candied, candied almonds, maybe even some walnuts as well. It's getting um, an almost a pickled character to it as well, approaching a sort of uh, a pickled. Or carrot, maybe it's still very, very robust, it's looking very aromatic, which is really exciting to see. But we're talking, you know, a lot more about some tertiary bottle aged characters here. So let's taste. Um, lovely and exuberant on the palate. Still very, very fresh. 12 year old raisin. Got excellent fruit here. On the palate, I'm seeing more stone fruits. Um, it's moving into some lovely ripe peach, apricot characters, maybe even some yellow nectarines. Um, uh, lovely texture here. Still excellent acidity. Uh, Carry through, I'm still tasting it, you know, after spitting it out, you know, about a minute ago. Uh, it's still lingering in my mouth, so wonderful, wonderful complexity and length to it. Uh, the oiliness is probably more of an aromatic compound here. It doesn't have heaps and heaps of viscosity on the palate. Um, it is quite dynamic. Uh, the, the, the fruit is, it's definitely not in that kind of vibrant, youthful period anymore. It is more in that kind of dried fruit character. Um, yeah, 
yeah, it's showing excellent poise and balance here. Uh, I think I've actually put, put opened it up at a really, really solid point. Uh, I'm not sure what the 2004 Vintage was like. Um, Tim, uh, if you're watching, possibly, um, or Brian, if you're watching, please do comment below. Uh, let me know what the 2004 Vintage was like. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to, to enjoy this bottle uh, this evening. Um, I think it is a really, a really excellent food wine. Uh, I don't know if Clonicula still make their Riesling, but if they do, I highly recommend it. It is one of those um, wines, like most Rieslings in Australia, that is so uh, insanely under underpriced, undervalued, and you can get some exceptional value here, um, particularly if you're looking to sell up. Uh, most of the time they are under screw cap, so you really don't have any issues with uh, cork problems. Uh, so, look, excellent wine. Uh, I can't remember how much I paid for it. I dare say I probably didn't pay that much for it. It might have been 20 to $30 in, in a, a lot of maybe three or six, something like that, I can't really remember. But uh, I'm really, really happy about that uh, wine, and I, I, it's, it's been selling well, thankfully. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching this uh, tasting edition of uh, Let's Taste. Tasting edition? Uh, seller edition of Let's Taste with the Intrepid Wino. Uh, of course, thank you to uh, Tim and the team at, at Climate Killer for making such a beautiful wine. Uh, I would love to get my hands on some more Climate Killer wines. Um, but uh, please do hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Uh, share it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, let me know if you've had some experiences with old Connor Killer wines or old Riesling wines. Come and visit me at intrepidwino.com uh, you can get in contact with me there. And I'd love for you to follow me on social media at intrepidwino. But uh, until next time guys, cheers.